Prime numbers are just natural numbers that can only be divided by themselves and one without leaving a remainder. Now, that might not seem like anything special, but in fact, prime numbers are the building blocks of the mathematical universe. They're like the atoms of mathematics. And some of the greatest unsolved problems in maths have to do with prime numbers. So in this video, I want to tell you a little bit more about them. On a practical level, prime numbers play an important part in our daily lives. Whenever you use a bank card, for instance, the bank's computer checks that you're the owner by using an algorithm that cracks a very big number into a unique product of two known primes. So much of our financial security depends ultimately on prime numbers. The first few primes are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23 and 29. All numbers that aren't prime are said to be composite. The number 1 itself isn't considered to be a prime because if it were, it would complicate some useful theorems including one that's so important it's called the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. This states that every number can be written in exactly one way, ignoring rearrangements, as a product of one or more primes. For instance, 10 equals 2 times 5, and 12 equals 2 times 2 times 3. If 1 were allowed to be prime, then there'd be an infinite number of ways of writing such a product, because it could include any number of 1s multiplied together. We know that there must be an infinite number of primes, or what amounts to the same thing, that there's no largest prime. Euclid proved this more than 2,000 years ago, in an elegant and straightforward way. Suppose that the number of primes isn't infinite, then we'd be able to multiply them all together, 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 and so on, all the way up to the biggest one on the list. Let's call the gigantic product that we'd get P and now add 1 to it. There are only two possibilities, either p plus 1 is prime, or it's divisible by a smaller prime. But if we divide p plus 1 by any prime on our list of what are supposedly all the primes, there'd always be one left over, forcing us to conclude that p plus 1 must also be prime. So, starting from the assumption that there's a largest prime number, we're led to a contradiction. In logic and maths, this is what's called reductio ad absurdum, in other words, disproving an argument by showing it has an absurd consequence. The starting assumption must be wrong, and therefore its opposite must be true. There are infinitely many primes, a result known as Euclid's theorem. Mathematicians in ancient times had no easy way to calculate large primes and the biggest on record from classical Greece is 127, which is the 31st prime, which not surprisingly is mentioned by Euclid. Of course, they almost certainly knew of larger primes, but presumably didn't find the need to make a list of them. Significantly larger primes were found in the Renaissance era, including the number 524,287, found by Pietro Cataldi, a prime number hunter from Bologna. The search for new primes began to centre around numbers of the form 2 to the n minus 1, where n is an integer, which are now known as Mersenne numbers, after the 17th century French monk Marin Mersenne, who devoted a lot of time to studying them. Mersenne numbers are useful prime suspects because selected at random they're much more likely to be prime than randomly selected odd numbers of similar size are. The first few Mersenne primes, in other words Mersenne numbers that are prime, are 3, 7, 31 and 127. Cataldi's big prime is the 19th Mersenne number, or M19, and the 7th Mersenne prime. It took almost a century and a half for a larger prime to be found by the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler in 1732. Almost a century and a half after that, in 1876, the record holder became Edouard Lucas, who showed that the 127th Mersenne number, M127, with a value of roughly 1.7 trillion trillion trillion, is also prime. 
While many Mersenne numbers are indeed prime, Mersenne himself made a few errors in determining primality, such as believing that M67 was prime. The factors of this were first found in 1903 by Frank Nelson Cole. On October the 31st, he was invited to give an hour-long talk at the American Mathematical Society. He walked up to the blackboard without saying a word, calculated 2 to the 67 minus 1 by hand, and then calculated 139,707,721 times 761,838,257,287, showing that they're the same, before returning to his seat to a standing ovation. He claimed that it had taken him three years of Sundays to find the factors of 2 to the 67 minus 1. Since 1951, the search for new prime numbers has exclusively involved computers and progressively faster algorithms for seeking out larger and larger Mersenne primes. At the time of writing, the largest known is M8259933, which has 24,862,048 digits. It was found through the great internet Mersenne prime search a collaborative distributive computing project of volunteers that's calculated the 17 largest Mersenne primes since 1997 when it was founded. I hope you've enjoyed this. In a future video, I'll be looking at some of the unsolved problems to do with prime numbers. Keep watching, and I'll see you again soon.